Welcome everyone to the governance and stakeholder topic of this online course on freshwater health. This is the last lecture in the governance and stakeholder topic and it focuses on the road ahead for freshwater governance. My name is Uta Wien and I'm Associate Professor of Water Innovation Studies at IG Delft in the Netherlands. IG Delft is offering this online course in collaboration with Conservation International, which, like us, is working to preserve and restore freshwater health around the world. In the governance and stakeholder topic, we have so far focused on the importance of freshwater systems governance and the ways it can be assessed. In this subtopic, we are taking a look at the road ahead for freshwater governance. Some fundamental trends concern the changes in data and knowledge co-production, which in turn influence the relationship between citizens and authorities and other stakeholders. So we will consider some of the key challenges and opportunities of these trends. Over the past three decades, the notion of public participation in the governance of water and the environment more broadly has been recognized in international policy guidelines, such as the Rio Declaration, the Aarhus Convention, the Water Framework Directive and the Sustainable Development Goals. However, the importance given to these institutional imperatives, their interpretation and the extent of their implementation vary considerably. Also, research has shown that many participatory approaches actually fail to lead to more informed and effective policy and practice. In some cases, this is because there are insufficient or misused resources, or particip participation may be considered merely a formality. In other cases, organizational reluctance or poor design of participatory processes hinder them from delivering their full potential. Parallel to the stipulations in these policy guidelines, a number of trends have also changed the way in which we produce data and knowledge for a sustainable world. Science has become more challenge driven and focused on addressing societal challenges. Information communication technologies have changed and accelerated the ways in which we generate, share and use data information and knowledge. And the open science movement is helping to open up the scientific production of knowledge in unprecedented ways, making not only data and research results openly and freely available, but also engaging societal actors. From the technological side, a range of Earth observation technologies are now in place that help monitor the environment, including parameters of the freshwater system. A key element in this scheme is the in situ component. Official monitoring stations are often still expensive and therefore are few and far between, creating the need to strengthen the in situ component in innovative ways. At the heart of the combination of all these trends in science, policy and technology sits citizen science and its various special forms such as community-based monitoring and co-monitoring. There are many definitions of citizen science, but there is general agreement that this entails the involvement of citizens, communities or member of members of the general public at large in co-creating data and knowledge. In the context of freshwater management, citizen science can entail the identification of driving forces at local scale and pressures such as increased nutrient emissions to water, but also measuring the status of water bodies in terms of pollutions, as well as changes in fish yields and the results of policy responses. Let us pause for a moment here and think about your basin. What citizen science initiatives are happening in your basin? What is their purpose and what do they focus on? When you are ready to continue, please press play. A particular form of citizen science and co-monitoring that is relevant to our focus on innovative governance are so-called citizen observatories. 
What makes them different from other monitoring schemes is their clear focus on influencing decision making, policy changes or other governance outcomes. Citizen observatories do this by typically involving authorities and other formal decision makers in the governance system early on or even from the start of their initiative. Also, citizen observatories try to support the flow of data and information between citizens, scientists and decision makers in new ways, often through dedicated infrastructure. The use of co-monitoring and citizen observatories can enhance and change existing forms of public participation and relationships between citizens and authorities. However, what these changes consist of varies. It depends on who is selected to participate in decision making, including in decisions on what data to collect. How participants interact in decision making. Are they a mere spectator or are they a negotiator at the table? And when and how is the citizen generated data and knowledge included? And how and by whom are the generated knowledge and insights acted upon and turned into formal decisions? So changes resulting from co-monitoring are location specific and locally shaped. The extent to which participation in citizen observatories and co-monitoring is empowering and meaningful depends on changes in the roles of both citizens and authorities. And the changing roles not only need to be granted, for example, by authorities, but they also need to be claimed by citizens. Apart from the data and knowledge co-creation happening in co-monitoring schemes, they can also present opportunities for social learning. Social learning typically refers to the collective rather than individual process of learning and accumulation of wide experiences. This helps to generate a broader knowledge and evidence base from which decisions can be taken. It also enables a deeper understanding of the freshwater governance situation and how it can be pro progressed and transformed. And this includes changes in mental models, beliefs, perceptions, and as a result, changes in governance practices. Overall, the role of citizen science in innovative participatory governance can be grouped into three partially overlapping categories. All of them entail some form of community-based monitoring. The first one is environmental monitoring via implicit and explicit data collection by citizens. Secondly, cooperative planning via stakeholder engagement and interactions, including among citizens, communities and decision makers in consultation, feedback and discussions. And finally, environmental stewardship. Uh, in which communities, authorities and other stakeholders jointly take care of the environment via fully realized dialogues and shared responsibility for natural resource management. Let's pause again and think about your basin. If you have been able to identify one or more citizen science initiatives in your basin, which category of participatory governance do they fit into? And if you could set up a co-monitoring scheme yourself, which category would you aim for? Press play when you're ready to continue. So while water-related citizen science presents really exciting opportunities for innovative participatory water governance, there are also issues with the implementation of these initiatives. Um, that includes sometimes the boring nature of some of the tasks that participants are asked to uh, undertake, but perhaps more importantly, mismatches in the goals of citizen science organizers and participants. This in turn can lead to high dropout rates of participants and reduces the chances of actually improving the physical environment in terms of water quality, health of ecosystems, but also uh, reduces the chances of re uh, improving the governance mechanisms. So a core difficulty in maintaining participants' interest and motivation stems from the inherent delays involved in manifesting impacts such as improvements in the state of, in of inland water ecosystems, freshwater systems, but also changes in policy. 
So the delay in these changes can lead to disillusionment and volunteer fatigue. These challenges highlight that citizen science is not an easy fix or a one-size-fits-all plug for co-monitoring and bringing about desired changes in the freshwater governance system. Rather, citizen science requires really careful implementation to serve agreed environmental and institutional purposes in a given basin or freshwater system. Fundamentally, since citizen science requires the involvement of people, so paying attention to their motivations, skills and resources, constraints and expectation provides the basis for sound and successful implementation of citizen science. This means we need to carefully consider different dimensions of citizen science and their interactions, and there are different approaches for doing so, including the co-design of citizen science. So with the increasing popularity of citizen science, including in the context of freshwater health, there is also an expanding experience base. Expen extensive guidance is becoming available in various online resources on how to address these practicality practicalities and challenges of implementing citizen science. This includes dedicated toolkits, uh, a cookbook, and MOOCs that bring together and synthesize experience from a range of citizen science project implementations in Europe and beyond. This completes the lectures in the governance and stakeholder topic of the MOOC on freshwater health. We have included reading material for you and some activities to complete. Thank you for participating in this course and we hope it has helped you grasp key concepts about freshwater health.